Good morning. Welcome to St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Stewart, Florida, and the blessing of the animals. So we'll be doing blessing at, uh, at our announcements. This morning we are using our Book of Common Prayer, or the bulletin that has been sent to you uh, at home. And we will be beginning, once we begin our prayers, on page 351. Our prelude begins our service. Processional is all creatures of our God and King, verses 1, 5, and 7.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer for you. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading from the book of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountains smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance, and said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us, or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you, and to put the fear of him upon you, so that you do not sin. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual from Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another. And one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language. And their voices are not heard. Their sound has gone out into the lands. And their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. 
It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened. And in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Our second reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to Israel, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as a loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn this morning are verses 1 through 3 of Higher Ground. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying. Higher 
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenant to collect his produce. But the tenant seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? And they said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. And Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the world, the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. And when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Gracious, loving, compassionate, persevering God, we ask you, Lord, to plant in our hearts that trust that we may seek in you all solace, all repentance of sin, and fruit of living with you in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. A young man at a local market started work there when he was in his teens. And every morning when he would come, Eric would be there sitting on the curb begging for all the, the customers who would be coming to the market. And Eric didn't miss a day. He was there from the beginning of the store hours to the close of the store hours begging. And so one day he said to his manager, do you think maybe he might be able to work with us? I mean, he's really very, very steady, more than many of our employees. He's been there longer than most of them. And the manager said, well, let's see what you can work out. So the young man goes and talks to Eric and says, um, would you be willing to work for us and we can train you and, and see? He says, sure. Eric said, I'm really excited. Um, I'll, I'll do that. So he showed up the next day young man tried to train him and realized he probably needed some clothes, so he pulls a couple bills out of his wallet and says, Eric, maybe you need to, to just dress up a little bit. So the next day he comes, he looks very, very nice, and they start, um, he puts him in, in food display and production. It's, it's as you go in, you see this, see this beautiful food and you smell the aroma, and it just, makes you think about wonderful meals and good food and produce. So he got him and he get him, gave him the fryer, the, the skillet, and he's doing things and he's also doing the juicer. And every time he'd put the juicer in, it would just go all over everywhere. And they said, well, Eric, I know we're required to do this, but here, let's, no matter how often he showed him, he couldn't do it. And it was really a prime part of the job. So he talked to his manager, he says, I don't know what to do about Eric, he's just not picking up on this. He says, well, you're gonna have to do what you have to do. So he went and he said, Eric, I've really got bad, bad news, we're gonna have to let you go. He says, well, well why? He says, um, I, I've tried really hard. He says, yeah, I've tried really true, trying to, to train and everything. He said, but I think I've learned an important lesson. He said, what's that? He said that beggars can't be juicers. 
it's on camera. You heard the groan. Okay. I thought it was funny too. Thank you. Thank you. Beggars can't be choosers. Beggars can't be choosers. But in this parable, in this world of God's creation, in all of its magnitude, magnificence, and abundance, and diversity, especially with animals and creation, we certainly aren't beggars. We are inheritors of tremendous wealth and treasure. We hear this parable today, which Jesus tells the a chief priest and the elders and the Pharisees in the temple, which follows a parable that we looked at last week. And if you recall that one of the two beloved sons of the, the landowner, the, he was will and won't. And will said he would work for the father in the vineyard and very politely and then just didn't, didn't even consider it. And then for the one who said, I won't, he eventually went back. And the question was, who is doing the will of the father? Who actually did it? Not what they said, but what they did. So this follows immediately. So it's still in that question that had preceded everything. By what authority do you do these things, Jesus? Like come in in a great procession down from the Mount of Olives as if you were the Messiah and going into the temple and turning on the, temp the tables of the money changers so that the people could pay from uh, the Roman coin, the, the, the Jewish coin, to pay what they needed to for their yearly assessment. So by what authority? And well, let me tell you. So which did the will of the Father? He tells another parable. Another one, this one of abundance, it takes us back to working in the vineyard and the collection of the harvest uh, two parables ago. And in this one in particular, it is the landowner who is probably a, um, a, a foreigner, it could be, but he comes and he buys this land, he puts a fence around it, he puts a watchtower up that can provide for not only safety by being able to view the surrounding uh, territory, but also provide some housing for the tenants that will lease the land if they so desire. And then he looks for people to lease it. And the re leasing of this would be to tend the vines that, what the landowners already planted through the first four years of these tender little plants' lives. Because when they get to the fifth year, that's the harvest. So what are these tenants called to do? They're called to be careful, to make sure there's no pest, they're to make sure there's they're watered and, and cared for. But are they planting? Are they digging? No, it's been done. This generous land uh, owner says, but in that fifth year, I will come to get the produce or the percent of court produce or the coins, whatever they've agreed to uh, in their understanding, in their contract. So, if year rolls around, the landowner sends his servants, his servants not only to collect either the produce or the money, but to protect it, to go back because he has traveled to a foreign land. And these tenants, with some thought in mind before they come, beat them up, stone them, and kill them. Sounds a little bit like often how the prophets were received in either uh, the northern kingdom or the southern one, uh, Judah. So the news gets back to the servants who survive as to what happened, and he again sends other servants, and the same thing happens. Some are beaten, some are stoned, some are killed. Then when that news is reported, the, the uh, landowner says, you know what, I'm gonna send my son. Surely they will respect him. And some of us say, really? Do you, do you really think that, Mr. Landowner, that they were gonna respect him? But maybe they will because he's the one who came with the authority. And when they see him, they may have made a jump that if he sent the son, he's dead because he's the heir who's coming then to collect what he knows is delinquent on this contract and probably to, to other, other tendencies. So they see the son and they plot at that point, if he's dead under the law of our nation, we get to be one of the claimants if no one else does. So they have plotted this out and when they see the son, 
they kill him. They remove him from the vineyard, they, clean, they kill him so it will not contaminate the land. They kill him outside, outside the, t the, the property. So he looks at them and um, he said, and what should the landowner do with these, these tenants? What did he think about these wicked tenants? And in one voice, but get them out of there, get rid of them, uh, put them to the sword. They, uh, they didn't keep their word, they didn't do what they were supposed to do, and they killed these other people when the landowner is only trying to collect what is owed to him. And so Jesus answers, and so you say, and so you say. At that point, their eyes must have gotten like saucers to realize it was a parable, actually an allegory about them. That it was the story of God once again sending prophets and the good word of love and to repent and to return and to honor what had been the understanding between in the covenant between the people of God and God. That calls us to look at the reading, particularly our reading from Exodus. This is the giving of the, the covenant that Moses brings down from the um, from the mountain where he has had uh, the theophany, the appearance of, of God and the revelation and the giving of the, the 10 words, the 10 ways in which people can become a people and a lover of God and one another. And these, as Moses makes his way down, you know what he encountered. Yes, the golden calf, all that. But what the people could see eventually was that there was lightning and there was thunder and there was smoke on this mountain and they trembled at this revelation of God, a fearsome God, as Moses says, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. This is basically the covenant that God is calling us into and they say, why? He said, so that we may have life, so that we may know that we're, we're God's beloved, that we're in covenant with God, and we give thanks for his mercy and compassion and all that he has given us, but particularly this life together, because it's by those 10 commandments that they find true life in those 10 words, as they call them. They then, as, as we know, develop into a nation as they make their way to the promised land. And eventually that will be picked up in some of our readings. But that's where they have been. They have been a people who have grumbled their way. Where's the, where's the meat? Where's the water? Where's the good foods of Egypt? Grumbled their way, become idolaters of a golden image and have shed, what was they say, um, something of human hands for the magnificence of God. Call to live together. We hear this story because we know what will happen. There will be rebellion again, that those 12 will become 10 tribes, two tribes. We know that there'll be rebellion and carrying the way to uh, Babylonia. We know that there will be the magnificence of David and Solomon and renewal of glory and of power. Yet, we now are in, uh, in the time of Jesus, seeing what has happened with the building of the temple, with the authority that has gathered around that temple and how it is dealing with God's people, particularly in an occupied land. That it has been the story of rejection from time beginning. We think of first the, the creation, that beautiful beginning of, of Genesis, of when God creates this beautiful world and, and puts plants and things that um, move and, and animals and beings and humanity and makes these and gives, us to, gives it to us as stewards of all of God's creation in this earth. I'm touched always by James Irwin when he from Apollo 15 in 1971, as the astronauts look out as they're leaving Earth and they say that it, it, it seemed to us that the Earth, the Earth looked as if a, as if it were a Christmas tree ornament, a hanging in darkest space. And as they moved further and farther away, they could see it as this, this, this 
beautiful thing that was becoming smaller and smaller until it became like a, a blue marble. To look at it to be so beautiful, so small, so living, a, 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 an object, and in that to be appear so fragile so that if you reached out your finger to touch it, it would crumble. And Erwin goes on to say, how could humanity look at that? How could a man behold that and not understand that this is God's creation and shows the love of God? When we think of earth and all that it is, we often take look at it as productivity, of, of the way it provides our food, of what we can take from it to provide for us. I love in also the book of Exodus and in chapter 23 when it talks about the land itself, about in its seventh year to let it lie fallow so it can recover all those minerals, minerals that have been extracted from it. And it always came to me as well, if it all were lying fallow, how would we eat that year? How would we do it? And I realized that probably you divide it up into six or seven sections, and it it's rotates on which land is fallow as farmers, that, that it's not 100% production, but it's allowing the replenishment. And why? To allow it to become stronger, but also in that uh, exhortation, to allow food for the poor. Works perfectly, works perfectly for good. Yet, it calls us to see, okay, maybe even the original garden that God gave to us, we didn't do right by. Because, as we know, the disobedience, not listening to God, but listening to another voice that told us that God didn't really mean what God really said, that we represented in Adam and Eve were expelled and know the hardships of life of, 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 and the explanation of how life became so hard as an etymology. Failure on our part is not new. The lure of greed and wealth and treasures and things that take us from God's heart, or not from his heart, but our heart from him or from God, is the story of us that we also impose upon a fallen earth, an earth that looks towards depletion and replenishment. In the celebration of St. Francis and the blessing of the animals and all creation as a theology and a way of seeing God in everything that St. Francis uniquely saw and turned us a glow and a fire, singing of this and a reading of this and of giving us songs that glorified uh, all creation. When you look at that, one of the things that I've heard as a proverb is this, it is best to plant a tree 20 years ago. The second best time to plant is now. So in that, it constantly calls us to repentance, to say, where are we in terms of our life with creation, the earth, with one another, with our uh, relationship with animals, our relationship with all, all animals in the air, the earth, and the sea, and in that to give God glory. Yet in this parable, allegory, that we have before us, in the killing of the sun, what we hear is God's reaching out once again to us, us who reject, us who are smarter, us that know better. And in it we see not only God's perseverance, God's trust in us over and over again, but God's greatest gift is God's son. That in the son who is indeed killed, sacrificed, in the Son, we see his sacrifice that becomes the action, the deed, that transforms that evil, that, that um, deed, into something that becomes a glory. That as he is then buried in a garden, in a garden where it all started, a beautiful garden, that in this garden, when he rises from the dead, he brings to us life again. That in that sacrifice, he gives us then all abundance of life. Paul, who we love to hear, particularly Philippians, one of the most beautiful uh, of, the, of the New Testament books, letters, 
In it, Paul explains, you know, let me tell you about my spiritual biography. Hey, if we were gonna go by human standards, I got it. I've got it perfectly. I was born a Jew. I was born in a very, very famous place. I had the best teachers that ever were. And on top of that, I was of the tribe, the best tribe, the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, just saying, I'm good. Yet, it isn't those credentials. It wasn't the following of the law. It wasn't the righteousness that Paul could proclaim because he even persecuted Christians, which would be in line with his thought. Um, but what he found, that everything he had there was worthless. The word is, is a word we don't say in church, but it's like, it's nothing. It's excrement. It's nothing compared to having found the love of God in Jesus Christ. And that he wants to work toward that, but he does it in faith. That he knows that he has been forgiven and that in this act of Christ, in this reaching out of God, he has hit Paul's heart to tell him, come home. Come home to faith in the glory of God through the gift of his son that in it we begin again. We plant a life anew from that day forward. We find this lastly, not only in our lives, but a way of living this out through the church. The church over time, continued, continued, has risen and fallen, has been in keeping with God's word, it has been against in, in not in keeping with God's word, but it is the vehicle through which the Holy Spirit works with us to help us be vineyards, uh, stewards in this vineyard. It is totally and always working in us to, to bring us to that knowledge of love and the commandments of loving God and loving our neighbor in, in working with those 10 best words that we already have heard. It is the living out within the church of God's perseverance and the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is also the ones that have found renewal through time. Each time it comes alive again through the gift of the Spirit. You know, St. Francis was known as the second Christ. He was the one that brought the church upside down into a way of loving and honoring God that saw praise and love in all things. And in this coincidence of the Feast of St. Francis on October 4th and our celebration of our redemption through Christ on every Sunday, but on October 4th, they meet. And we give God praise, we give him thanks, we give him all hallelujah that we can, that he has given us the gift of his son, and he has given us new life through him. Amen. We continue in our Book of Common Prayer on page 358 with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being, of the Father, through which all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
join me in response with the prayers of the people. With all our heart and all our mind, we pray to you, O Lord. Make us instruments of your peace. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Where there is hatred, let us so love. For our enemies and those who wish harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Where there is injury, let us so pardon. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Where there is discord, let us so union. For those who not, do not yet believe, for those who have lost their faith, and those in despair and darkness, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Where there is doubt, let us sow faith. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, especially Stephen, Randy, Rafe, and Dave, and also for the refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Where there is despair, let us sow hope. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Where there is darkness, let us sow light. For those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they may be comforted and healed. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray to you, O Lord. Where there is sadness, let us sow joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Our Confession of Sin on page 393. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. 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 What is it? Our announcements and the blessing of the animals. Um, let's go ahead and do our announcements and tell you that, first of all, you were invited to our virtual coffee hour following this service. You will receive that link by mail, uh, by email, in the past week. Also, uh, we will have on October the 13th a discussion on the, the movie Black Panther and our bulletin list all sorts of ways to see it and to, to be able to enjoy and uh, to stir us. Also, let's see, there is uh, each Sunday now going forward a time change, as it's uh, the same as, as today. 845 is our drive-in church, as well as our outside worship. Outside worship requires the uh, reservations, and we're limited uh, to 20, and that will increase gradually as we are able to do it safely. Our in-church worship is at 10 o'clock, and uh, we're in the process of at least 20 and, and, and growing for that also. That requires reservations yeah, by your, on your part, and you will find those, uh, that link on our website. We have on each Wednesday our Wednesday evening family worship. We ask you to, to join us by Zoom. It is uh, Jonathan Cummings and me, and we sing, and we do a little Bible study, and it's about 30, 35 minutes for all ages. Those of you who may have uh, birthdays, anniversaries, we're traveling. Let's do those blessings now. A prayer for travelers. 
O God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And for birthdays, O God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And anniversaries. Almighty God, giver of life and love, bless these thy servants. Grant them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their common life that each may be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. And so knit their wills together in your will and their spirits in your spirit, that they may live together in love and peace all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. The blessing of the animals. An overall prayer. Gracious God, you have placed before us such a variety of your creation, but you've carved out special places with special animals that have such a relationship and understanding that we understand them and they us, we think. Uh, we give you thanks for our animals, for our dogs, our cats, our lizards, our bats, our whatever gerbils, the guinea pigs, all that we have taken under our care. Help us always to, to love them and see them as yours and to treat them with kindness and love in Jesus' name. His name? Henry, God's blessing be upon you. May you always be a gift uh, to the one who loves you and they to you. Amen. All right. Thank you. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One.
hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and had their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust. We turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them their, your glory in their unending hymn. Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption, and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God, taken in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Christ is our cornerstone. <laughs> Yes, bro. 
Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.